All right, all right. Nina? Yes. All right. A bad, let me make sure I'm pronouncing this right. A bad, a bad mother, mother trucker. Trucker. A yeah. bad mother trucker. Mm. Hell of a name. <laughs> Hell of a name. Me, I pride myself not to not to have trucker in my name. You know, like everybody just go with with trucker in the name. Well, let's go ahead and uh, get this uh, bad boy started. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Yo, what's going on, lockout men in the building? What's up? How you guys doing today? Well, you know, I, I just do the damn thing. That's what I do. I come to you guys. You know, I was asked a few minutes ago. Somebody said, "Lockout, how how come you don't have how come you don't have that much numbers on your channel? You you do good shit." And I say. I don't know. I mean, I've been in the game. I've been in the YouTube game for X amount of years, but I wasn't serious with it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm hoping you guys like what I do. You know, try trying to give you some good quality content. You know what I'm saying? But it's not about me. It's about this young lady that I'm bringing on today. Today's interview, uh, podcast interview is uh, with a young lady that's been in the game for two years. And in that time, she's either been an owner operator or a carry. And she got her own authority. So I got to find out about all this, man. Within two years, man, let's see what let's let's see what this young lady about. I like to bring to the stage. I would like to bring to the stage Nina, a bad mother trucker. How's it going, little lady? Wonderful. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Just up here, just just up here in Illinois, chilling. You know, just just doing the damn thing, waiting, uh, waiting for my ten hour to be up, and uh, and yeah. Just to, just to see what's going on, I guess. You know? How about yourself? Well, what, what part of the world you in? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Currently getting ready to get back in the truck this evening, mm -hmm. doing all my laundry and preparing my stuff. Okay. To hit the road. Okay. Okay. Are 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 you from Atlanta, or are you 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 doing your ten hour in Atlanta? I live in Georgia now. Okay. In northern Atlanta. And I am originally from the Bay Area, California. Oh, okay, okay. So you're a Southern SoCal girl, huh? Why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and uh, let the people know where you where you come from? Uh, my name is Nina. I am a Northern California girl from the Bay Area, and have lived there most of my life, and now relocated to the lovely state of Georgia. So, uh, so why, why, why move to Georgia from the from from the sunny states? I mean, I hear I hear it never rains in California. <laughs> You've never been to Northern California. It oh, rains up there. Oh, I never. <laughs> oh, you you said I never been to Northern California, huh? It, it's a different climate. It's two separate states down there. You could say. So it's I like, like all of California, though. So it's like it's like Arizona with with two equators. Like the top of Arizona is like freaking cold below zero and the bottom of Arizona is like it's like ninety degrees. Is like that up there? Um, I wouldn't say it's that crazy, but we do have cooler weather in Northern California. And mind you we have Tahoe where they have snow, all types of, you know, all types of stuff going on. It's a long state, so <laughs> Damn it, man! I, I guess that's something I'm gonna have to get used to. Well, speaking of uh, speaking of getting used to, how was it? How how was it? You how how was it to get used to uh, the climate change from 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 there to to Georgia? To Georgia, I had done 
some traveling here before because my mother lives out here, and that's mm-hmm. the main reason I moved out here to have a little bit more support and help with my children, especially when I'm on the road. Okay. So, I did have a little experience, but you don't get used to the humidity out here. That's the one thing. It's just hot and sticky in the summer, and that just, ugh. <laughs> I don't say, think you get used to that. You say you say you would never you would never get used to that. So how was it growing up? Uh, how was it growing up in California, man? I mean, sunny sky. Well. Northern California, so you right. had rain and you had you did you did you experience snow up there? I know you didn't experience no snow. Um, I don't recall any snow. Oh, uh, okay. I'm about to no. say, yeah. I, I don't think I, I don't think I ever seen snow in California. I mean, hey, it snowed in it snowed in Las Vegas it before. Di- what? Yes. <laughs> oh man, man. I you know what I I, I, I haven't. I got I to gotta Google that. I got to I got I, I to Google that right quick. I lived in Las Vegas about two, three years ago, right before I got, right when I started getting into trucking. Mm-hmm. And it snowed out there around that time, mm-hmm. shortly after. Man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, <laughs> so you, world. so you, so you moved around when, uh, you, you moved around in your, in your young, young age. You, uh, from California to Las Vegas, and now you're in Georgia. Uh, where yeah. did you, where, where did you acquire your, uh, CDL? I got my CDL in California. Okay. You went to school for it or you, you, you drove for a company? I did- I went to a school, mm-hmm. you know, just a private little school, and I went there for about three weeks and got my CDL and kind of got rolling from there. I had a lot of help and support when I first started, thankfully. Um, and a lot of stuff I honestly did not know. I had to learn on the road. Of course. You know, you know, you, situation. <laughs> you, you know, you know, they're just, uh, they, you know, the school just, Get you ready for your for your CDL. Okay. Nothing else. Yeah. Everything else exactly. you just have to. Everything else you just have to throw out the window and and pretty much go to school all over again. Right. The school of life. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. The school you of life. You think you know everything when you get out of school? Mm-hmm. No. You're, you're, you're not prepared. You're still you're, learning. You're right. And still to this day. <laughs> All right, so uh, you got your CDL at a at a small uh, company. Was it out of pocket or or you? Yes, I I paid for my school out of pocket. Um, the owner I had known for a little while because I have many friends who went to CDL school with him, get mm-hmm. their Class A license, mm-hmm. and it was a great experience for me. And that's kind of where it all began. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, so you, so this is out of pocket. What made you, what, what made you realize that you wanted to get into trucking was what, what life experience or, you know, down and out. What, what, what was it that, that, that you decided that you wanted to do trucking? Well, my life was full of a lot of hustle and bustle before trucking. And I was looking for a different career path. And at that moment, I had known a couple people who were already in the trucking industry or you got their CDL, and they kind of, you know, convinced me this is a cool thing to do. You don't have to have a whole lot of degrees. You just have to work hard and have dedication. You can do something. And that kind of where the idea came from It's just to seeing other people in the industry and getting a little bit of advice. And ever since then, I've been in love with it. Who inspired you? Like, I mean, like some you 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 said you've known a lot of people. So, did somebody come up and say, "Hey, this is an easy job to get into," you know, which is no, rich, no. which it isn't. But no, no, no. I um have a significant other who did have their CDL before. Well, who did and have he, their CDL? What? Well, he still does. He still works. Uh-huh. And um, kind of, you know, it guided me in the direction to do something along the lines of trucking. Also, I did have some friends that owned a car hauler previously mm-hmm. that I actually helped them 
with their authority set up and paperwork and kind of saw how the ins and out worked with them. So I was a little bit more confident when I started myself. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So you, so you've been in the game for two years. So where, where did you start? Uh, where, where did you start training uh, to get on the road? Was it, was it a company or was it, or was it a, you know, BBF was, or a small company? What was it? It was a, I had gotten a truck, a 2012 Freightliner Cascadia, and a little company in Central California took a risk on me mm -hmm. and hired me as an owner operator. Whoa! And wait, 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 wait. Let let me back up a little bit. I, let me back up a little bit. You right out the yes. gate brought your truck. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, well, now I'm kind of curious. You you got my curiosity peak right now. Was, <laughs> did you did you did you already did you already have plans of becoming the owner operator when you got your CDLs and you started saving yes. up? You you started saving up for it. What what was the process from getting your CDLs to getting the truck? I had already had plans and was already looking into trucks before I even got my CDL. Okay, okay. Just from being around other people that were already in that experience line, you could say I had networked with the right amount of people, and the right people helped me, guide me to the owner-operator side of things. And okay. That's just the type of person I am. Okay. <laughs> I like to do stuff for myself. And I like the flexibility of the owner operator. Okay. Yeah, you got a lot yeah, you got a lot of flexibility. And now you, you mentioned that you had uh you got your own authority as well. Um I'm I'm kinda curious to uh what was the steps taken? Uh you said the company, you know, you said the small company uh, you leased on what gave you gave you your chance of owner operations. Right. What was the experience? Well, what what was the ups? What was the downs of of leasing on to that company? Well, I did start as well. Clear. Let me clear things up. I started and I started as a team. I didn't start just all the way by myself. Mm -hmm. um, I had some guidance from somebody else who had been driving for a year before. Okay. And we kind of learned things as we went and just ran hard, um, hustle, hustle, hustle. And um, probably six months later, they had reached out to me in particular because I was a new driver mm -hmm. and told me that their insurance was too high. And they had to take they you off. They afford to keep me on. They said that they would love for me to keep driving if I was to get my own authority and my own insurance mm -hmm. and – Etc. And at that point, it was just in my mind, I'm not going to pay you 12% for you to dispatch me, and I have to pay for the rest of the stuff. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, okay, okay. So they wanted, so they 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 pretty much said that okay, well, our our insurance is is not won't be able to cover you, so we're gonna have to cut you, but we can keep you. And we can keep you on under your own authority, but we got you got to pay us a twelve percent percentage, right? Hmm. I, and you said that didn't make no sense to you at all for doing that, huh? Well, yeah, especially because now it was all the risk was on me. Okay, okay. So back then, uh, two years ago, so we talking we we talking what twenty eighteen? We talking twenty eighteen? Yep. Uh, when you got it's about 2017, 2018, 2017, 2018. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what we're talking about, uh, we, we talking about you being the owner operator because you know, there's a lot of crazy things that's going on with you, you know, that's going on with you guys, uh, you know, you guys versus the brokers and everything. So let's, uh, oh, yeah. let's, um, uh, Let's continue on. Let's continue on that, man. You know, you being an owner operator. So you so you left that company, I take it. And you was inspired. Yeah. You was inspired from there to get your own authority. So walk us through the process. Yeah. Walk us through the process of getting your own authority. Like, 
you know, what what you had to get, how much it was, uh, how much you came out of your pocket to to set everything mm-hmm. up to where you at right now. All right. Um, well, I worked with a company that specifically helps people with their paperwork mm-hmm. for setting up their authority. Okay. So okay. that's to alleviate a lot of um, pressure the first time around. Now, I will say you could do it yourself. Mm-hmm. It's fairly simple. You could look it up and apply for your MC and DOT number. Right, but if right. you screw up the paperwork, you will end up waiting Mm-hmm. even longer for that to get corrected and back on track. Okay. So that's the one thing you got to watch out for. You got to be scrupulous when it comes to that. Um, the registration costs about 2800 2800 Right. Okay. And then the thing that really was expensive, because I was a new driver, um... And I got added on to the insurance was the insurance because when you don't have a lot of experience and you are a new authority, Mm -hmm. the insurance, you are considered high risk. And so for the first year, I had a high risk insurance company. Now, it costs a lot, a huge down payment, as well as not all companies will take a certain rating of your insurance. So if you're not A rated or B plus, they will not uh, let you haul with them. So not, kind of exit some companies out. Now you talking about you you talking about trying uh trying to get loads with brokers and everything. They yes. they look at they look at what is a like like they look at a score just like they look, you know, just like uh companies when 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 company drivers get on with these companies, they look at it it's like a DAC report for 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 you guys, right? Well, you do have the scores. They do have a, a safety score, and the brokers do put in comments and notes, mm-hmm. as well as your insurance. Mm-hmm. Particularly, that company is rated. So you have like A plus insurance, B insurance, and then unrated high risk insurance. Okay. Which is most likely what new people have to deal with. And they go off of that because, you know, say if you were to get into a accident or something happened with the cargo, they need to make sure that the insurance company will pay their claim right. in a timely manner. And some of the and some of the freight claims is like it's in the stratosphere. Like you you could get you well, could get a freight claim like in the millions, right? And you need yeah, it. All in, depends on what you're hauling. And you need insurance. What's well? You said you was high risk. So what's the what's the amount that you guys have to get for high risk insurance? Well, it's the basic. You still have to get your you know physical damage and your liability. A hundred thousand okay. in a million. Oh, and so then, it's a hundred thousand in a million. So that's the so that's the that's the that's the average right there. Well, that's the bare minimum. Some companies that you will haul for require like two million liability. Ooh. That's like Amazon, because that's just you know you're hauling more expensive products, or for electronics okay. you require more. And um, car haulers, they some of them require crazy amounts of insurance. You can imagine the cars that they're hauling. Right, right. Okay, okay. Uh, you mentioned car haulers, and this is the second time you mentioned it. So, did you, did did you did you do car hauling at one point? No, I never did car hauling. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. No. Well, that, if you know some, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Huh? I I was about to that say. Was, <laughs> that was my that was my boyfriend that did car hauling, and I had helped him set up all his company stuff and all that type of, uh, you know, all the stuff that goes with it. Oh, okay. And he helped me a lot set up my, you know, authority and stuff in return. Okay. So how long was, how long was the process of setting up your authority? A week, month, year? Um, I'd say it took an average about a month. Oh, about a month. 
All right, yeah. and, you was, and you was ready to get out there. Was you still was you leased on to another uh, to another company while you was going through getting your own authority? I was still with the company that had leased me on initially. Oh, the one that and wanted twelve percent. Yeah, the, what screwed me up is the guy in safety there thought he was being helpful and tried to set up my uh, MC and DOT number for me, uh-huh. and I had already done it, and so I ended up with two. DOT number. Okay. Somehow. And I had to clear that up. So it was just, I, <laughs> it was a paid to begin with, but okay. I never had really a downtime in between that. I went straight from lease on to being on a carrier. The, being a carrier. How, how does it, how, how does it feel being a carrier? You know what? It's great. It's a female, a, ca- a female carrier at that. <laughs> think about the female part i just think i'm a person i'm doing the same thing you know other people have done and it's a great when, experience when you it's, see it's a lot of work when when you roll up in a when when you roll up in in your truck you got your name on your side of your truck you got your own mc's number you roll up in a in in the truck stop you know pull up in the fuel island you want to get some fuel and all like that you know, you step out your truck. What 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 type of what 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 type of what type of feedback you get when you know when the when when the male driver or anybody like that sees you coming up out of your truck, and they notice that you know you're a female owner. What what type of feedback you get from that? Um, a lot of people think it's great. I have a lot of support from a lot of people. Some people just are plain. Assholes. Oh no, I, I don't want to say asshole mm. straight out, but just ignorant maybe. Yeah, is yeah. a good word. Yeah, you know, doesn't. I, I don't know how to. Expl- I have the right words for it, but just stupid questions like, "Do you drive the truck? Is that your truck, really? Did you, uh, you know, just silly questions." Is your I is guess. your is your boyfriend or is your is your man in the truck or something like that? Do you run teams and stuff like that? You know, we did the team thing, and we have decided that yes, occasionally we will still do teams, but overall, it's a lot to be in the truck with someone twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, especially when you're both very uh, opinionated. Competitive? No, I wouldn't say we're not competitive. We have our our way of thinking how things should go, and sometimes that causes a clash of the heads. Okay, you know. Okay, so we like to both be in. We like to both be in charge of our company. So okay, so uh, so like I said, when when you get out of the truck and people see that, um, and people see that, and you say they come with uh, you know, a barrage of of questions and all like that. But when you tell them like, yo, this is my truck and I'm, you know, owner operator and, and I've been, you know, and I've been doing it for two years. What, what, what type of, uh, what type of feedback you get from that? Like, you know, like do you get the, do you get the draw drop like two years? Some people are honestly surprised. They say, well, how do you do that? Well, you save up your money and you, you set a goal. That's what you do. That's what you make your mind to do. Anyone could do it, quite honestly, if they said that's what they have in their mind to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, fear can't be a an option when you're trying to make your own business. You know, right. Right. yes, the fear is there, but you got to do it. And I get that a lot. And I get people saying, oh, well, that's really great. You know, either it's very supportive or very uh, ignorant. I am Russian. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I don't okay. Know why people think that people get? I get asked all the time. People okay. Come up to me and ask me, "What race are you?" I'm like, I am a human. I, that's just such a strange question to ask somebody. To me, in my opinion, but I get it all the time because people just get confused. Okay. Just, <laughs> okay. You're Russian. <laughs> oh, okay. But you was, but as as you said before in the beginning, you was you was born in the states, though. But your your background. No, I was actually born in Russia. Okay. 
Okay, see, I am wrong. I, would, all the way I, around, a, I have a very. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> give myself like a hit or something, man. Right? Damn. Go ahead. <laughs> I have a very interesting background and interesting. That's a whole nother book, I guess you could say. You said a whole nother book, huh? <laughs> yes, it's a whole nother book. So what made but, you what 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 made you what, what what made you come to the states? Like, I got adopted. Oh, okay, yes. okay. When I was five years old, I came and got adopted, and uh, <laughs> that's just basically all I'm going to say about that. Okay, okay. Yeah, you don't have to. You 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 don't have to. You don't have to go in in uh. In the in the detail on that, right? Um. All right. So two years in the game. What what was you doing beforehand? I mean, what what was you uh, what what were you doing beforehand before you got into trucking? Well, right before, I lived in Las Vegas and I was a bartender. Oh, okay. Out there, and so I went from glitz and glam to yoga pants and t shirts and sneakers <laughs> you know <laughs> how was how was, it was life like a full 360, 360. How, how was life like in vague in vegas for that little stint i i'm, I'm sure I it was it. i'm you sure know, it was it fast was, pace it was exciting you know trucking is fast paced too so it kind of you know you move from one thing to another okay i would say trucking is just as fast paced if not more sometimes, you know, you're always on the move. You always have, you know, right. especially being an owner operator, you have stuff to deal with stuff that you don't even plan for stuff that you can't plan for. doesn't even pop in your mind to think about it. Will sometimes happen. You know what I'm saying? All right. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, some people will say that it's fast paced. Some people will say it's slow pace and all like that. But I mean, you know, being a bartender, being a bartender in Vegas, I'm sure the tips that you, the tips was coming in fast and wide, right? Right. You you was making good right. money, and that's a that's a big difference in way of cash flow. Okay. You know, was it was it at like a a bar, or you just you you was a bartender at one of them big casinos out there? Um, it was at a smaller bar. Oh, okay. What do you what do you what do you think is better? What do you think is better and much more comfortable being at a small bar setting or being at a being at a big casino setting? I I would say any of it works. If you know what you're doing, you can make it work. Oh, okay. It's not a you know each to each their own, pretty yeah. much. There you go. All right, so a Russian female driver, man. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. I am very intrigued. Owner operator I'm, for two years, right out, right out the gate. So you, well, so are honestly, you? Honestly, though, I have to say I have had a lot of help, and the trucking community themselves have helped me out so much. If you reach out to people, they will help you. You know what? A lot of them will. You know what? I'm I'm I I am so glad that you that you mentioned the trucking community because there is there is a group there's a group of people in the community that is not helpful at all. Well, that's in life in general, right? Mm -hmm. You have your a holes and you have your helpful people to keep working till you find someone that that will help you take all the information you can a lot of stuff you can learn just by looking exactly. you observe people doing something you don't have to have uh you know a phd in something to make it work if you put enough hours into your research if you observe enough you can make it work you can pretty much do anything you choose to do Exactly. And I am a firm believer of that. Exactly. I'm 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 the type of person that, you know, I I would sit back and listen, you know, instead of instead of talking. I mean, I would ask key questions when it needs to be asked, but all all in all, I I sit back and listen because you know, if you you listen more than you talk, then you 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 you'll learn more. You know what I'm saying? You'll learn more. So you you um man Oh my God! I'm, I'm like I said, I'm I'm still a tree that you're, you know, that you you are where you are right now. So are you? So let's talk about uh, let's let's talk about 
uh, the situation that's going on right now, the drivers, the owner operators versus the brokers and uh, and the cheap freight out there. Uh, oh yeah. You you what, what's your opinion? What's your opinion on 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 all of that right now? I have a mix of opinion, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. I look at stuff from different perspectives. And I could say, you know, part of it is the virus did cause facilities shut down. It did cause a decrease of freight, mm-hmm. supply and demand. Another way of looking at it is truck drivers are doing an essential job. Mm-hmm. And they are not getting hazard pay for this job. hmm So while the excuses come that the fuel prices are low, the, you know, there's not much supply and demand, Mm -hmm. we're still out here doing a job and people still need their essential goods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can't use that as a complete cop out. And then it comes the people who decide to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they had some small protests. They had the slow roll. They had... You know, the truckers in front of the White House and people have an opinion about what they're doing wrong. And I feel like unless you have an opinion, you know, uh, to make things better, you have no room to criticize. Right. You shouldn't be on a you shouldn't be on the sideline if you're not if if you're not in the right. front line. Either don't complain about it and keep working because you will find work. You're just going to have to make do for the time being. But. Not for sixty cents a mile, not for eighty cents a mile, not even really for a dollar a mile, because we all know that to operate a truck, it costs on average, I would say, just for the fuel and the operation, I would say about fifty cents a mile, depending on what truck you have, insurance, et cetera. Now you mean more than so, fifty cents a mile on average, right? Yeah. Well, you do make more, yeah. Oh, okay, average. yeah, because on average, from what I'm understanding, on average is two uh, I'm two dollars a mile. To haul the freight for the the truck driver. Oh, so you talking? Not making a good margin. Oh, oh you talking about you you talking about as far as you know? You talking about as far as fifty cent a mile uh, for the for the, for the for the for the driver? Because like I said, yeah. uh, like I said, the average from what people has told from told me. It's like two dollars a mile, or an average. That's the lucky. That's what you want. Is at least two dollars a mile. Okay. Okay. That is what you would want. But let's keep it honest. Even before this coronavirus stuff in 2019, it was more difficult to find freight for two dollars a mile. So this has been an ongoing issue before this virus has hit. It just has slumped down even more. So this this CV this CV nineteen pretty pretty much brought this into the forefront of of how brokers was treating you guys. But then there's some, right. you know, I'm a company driver, so I you know I'll just sit here and look at it from you know both sides of the fence. You know, I I'm for the drivers, you know, to get paid, but I also see where the brokers coming from too. They, you know, they they doing a lot of the they doing a lot of the leg work. They they looking for the lows. They're they're negotiating the prices with the shippers and stuff like that. So why not? Why not? Uh, why not have a, a a little bit of a higher margin? Uh, a little bit of a higher margin for the for the brokers because I'll what they're you. what they're trying to do is what they're trying to do is find somebody to move the freight at a, at a, at an inexpensive price. Right. But it shouldn't come at the cost of the driver because without the driver, the broker would not have a job. And let's keep in mind now we have more automated brokering too, such as Uber freight, such as convoy, you know, even Coyote has a Coyote Go app. You can go on the their load boards and click the freight and go. Mm. Now, you know, put in your bid without talking to somebody. Um, I just believe, you know, everyone has a job that they're doing, but it shouldn't come to the expense of somebody else. You know, fair is fair. I agree. And uh, when you're pocketing too much money and this person is spending weeks and months on the road working their butt off for you that's not fair be fair that's all people ask for they're not asking for uh 
you know, every last drop of something, they're asking for fairness. And a lot of people now are asking for transparency. They want to see what the broker is getting paid by the shipper to ship the load and what the margin is that they're getting and what they're keeping. Some people don't think and that's, well, well, I ain't going to say some people. Some of the brokers don't think that's fair. I mean, they, I mean, they don't want to, I mean, I understand, I understand the truckers want to not there though, because we want to know just as you want to know how much you're getting paid. We're like, and then if we ask for the information, God forbid you're put on a list, a do not call list or do not, you know, call. I list, mean, it's like, you could say. It's, it's like you being an entrepreneur, right? Okay, so right. I, I'm, you want to know your margins, right? Let's let's say you know I I was an entrepreneur back in the day. You know I owned it my own business. Um, my what I was getting from my contractors was was my business, but what I was going to give to my employee, you know, my employee is what I want to give him. Now he'll come around, you know, I'll say, hey, for each. Uh, but we are not we are for, not an employee. But I That's I know, but I'm I'm just using I'm just using that as an it's I'm just yeah. using that as an example because my employee will come back to me and say, Oh, okay, well how much you getting from uh how how much how much uh this company paying you to do the to do the contract? I I mean I'm gonna look at him and tell him like, yo, bro, it's kinda like none of your business. I mean, I'm offering you I'm offering you a set price to do the job mm -hmm. and either you either want to do the job or you don't. You see what I'm saying? Right. So yeah. it's just like it's just like now how the brokers is. It's like, well, I don't think it's any of the any of you guys business of how much I'm getting. It's it's the business of how much I'm giving you. You know, or how much you yeah. how much you would how much you would accept. You know what I'm saying? Right. So if if the you're not gonna is, if you're not gonna accept it for if you're not gonna accept it for a dollar fifty a mile, somebody will. That's what I'm saying. Right. But why play those games with somebody? You know, there's people out here that work so hard for their truck and you know, not everyone is just rolling in the dough. They need the money. So it's basically taking advantage of the people who need the load. And they're barely making it work. So why not have a, a, at least a fair price for somebody? You know, why put something ignorant like 60 cents on the board, 80 cents on the board? You mm. know, that's a crazy. Well, you know. That's th disrespectful. Some... And I understand your point mm -hmm. where people do drive the market. It is a market driven. It's, it's called the spot market for a reason. Mm -hmm. And. Unfortunately, there's no way uh, we're so divided, just in general, that there is. It's it's tough to get a consensus on what to do. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I hey, look, like I said, I'm I'm from I'm from both sides of the fence. I'm I'm sitting. You you see me when you see a fence. You see me up on the fence, just kicking back with Lassen and and looking at both sides and see how right. how how all this is affecting everybody and being that this pandemic that's that's just this totally disrupted everything but let me right. ask you let me ask you this let me ask you this bad mother trucker the money was good back in the day right why wasn't there why wasn't there no no issues when the money was good back in the day why why y'all didn't ask for transparency I, then? Hey, some <laughs> people might have still wanted transparency. I can't speak for everybody. Mm -hmm. I could say it's it's a difference for me, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. When it is so blatantly transparent with the rates they're putting out there, it's damn near, in my opinion, disrespectful. I got you. You know? You don't have to take that load, but it's like, why ask the truckers to haul freight for 80 cents a dollar a mile? You know our costs. Everything else has gone up, right? Mm -hmm. Insurance rates, mm -hmm. sometimes fuel costs. Mm -hmm. They've been down. They're going back up a little bit, if you notice. Everything else has gone up for truckers. It is not cheap to own and operate a truck. 
especially with maintenance and everything else. So I believe, you know, it's just a flawed system all the way around, just like many other things we could speak about. That's where the where the frustration comes in. Okay. That's where people are like, wait a minute, this is not fair. This is ridiculous. I got you. We need to make a living here. And, of course, people aren't going to complain when people are going to be fair. When things are going the right way, why complain? It's okay. (laughs) But when it's, like, blatant, I could deal with the spot market going up and down. And I understand, just as anything else, it has its slow times. It has its uh, high times. But when it's blatantly obvious or crazy, like we've been seeing, that's when people are like, wait a minute. What the heck is going on? I got you. I got you. Well, wow. It's 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 a lot it's a lot to take in right now considering uh considering what's going on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. It's and we've never dealt with something like this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot going on. Uh and and you guys out there, you know, there's 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 the truckers, you know, the the owner operators. They're out in D.C. They're trying to get help from the government to see if they can they can get some type of mandate to to pressure the mm-hmm. brokers to be more transparent out there and uh and and hopefully you know get a little bit more money in your pocket, you know. So right. I mean, I, I more power to you guys. I mean, I I hope it I, I hope it all works out. Uh, as far as you go, uh, how, how has uh, how has this uh, uh, CV nineteen affected you? As far as you know, affected you. As far as trucking, or yeah. personally? No, as far as trucking. Okay, um, as far as trucking, of course, I've seen the rates go down. I have been dealing with personal issues of my own. So I have been taking some weeks off. Okay. Okay. Um, I won't go into that because I will probably start crying. Yeah. No, you don't (laughs) have, you don't have to, uh, go ahead. However, I could say, you know, I see the change in the facilities. Everyone's kind of learning to adapt as we go. And it it does bring frustration. Changes always bring frustration out to people because people are used to their regimented lives and routines. Mm -hmm. Some people, I can't speak for everyone, Um, but it's just a new way of living and we got to kind of adapt to it. Change is inevitable. Um, But I have seen the lower rates and it is, has been difficult to find good loads at some points and, you know, you spend hours and hours looking. Sometimes you can't get a load because, you know, the rates are just too low. I got you. Um, now they're going up a little bit. It is evening up a little bit and easing off the cheap, cheap freight. But I think at the, the time, as far as me as a trucker, I get frustrated seeing the low rates because I just know, just like everyone else, we're working to get America back moving. Yeah, it, so, it's gonna take it's gonna take a while. <laughs> it's gonna take a long uh, while well, yeah, to get to get us back hit. to get us back to where we at. Uh, all right. So, uh, Nina, bad mother trucker, you you are a mother. So, how how does uh how, how's your family take it? Uh, take you being a truck driver? How how how's it affect your kids? Um, luckily, I'm blessed with two understanding boys of course we miss each other i wish i could spend more time with them sometimes i take my youngest with me in the truck Mm because he loves to be with me and do the trucking thing Mm -hmm. um i spend luckily we have facetime now i spend a lot of time facetiming and when i'm home i make the best out of our time that we have i just my hope is that they realize i'm making a sacrifice for them you know i want Life is not getting easier. It's only more it's difficult. Get, it's going to get in harder. In my opinion. Yep. Yeah. So I just want to set them up for as much success as I can give, and that's why I make the sacrifice. I would love to be home with them. I would love to spend all the time in the world with them, but I understand the reality of things, and that's just how I choose to live my life. Exactly. And I just hope you know, that they understand that and 
that's basically all I can ask for. I love them to death, but you got responsibilities as a parent. Kids did not ask to be here. And, you know, I believe as a parent, your duty is to set your kids up for as much success as, you as they can. can. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's a, that's a good statement from a, from Bad Mother Trucker right here, man. I got to give her a bomb drop for that. So, uh, Bad Mother Trucker, I want to thank you for coming on and uh, chopping it up with me, man. This this been a this been an incredible podcast with you. I got to learn a little bit more about you. Um, what's what what type of advice? What what type of advice? you got for some of the young uh, up and coming lady drivers that's thinking about coming into the industry and maybe, and maybe going on their operations. What, what type of advice you got for them? My advice would be to plan your plans out, stick to your goals, just the basic ordinary advice and you know, it is a little bit tougher for ladies in this industry. We do get some unwanted attention. We get, you know, weird comments, et cetera. You got to have to have a, a strong backbone and learn how to fend for yourself pretty much, just as anyone else would do. And it's all possible. We women are, are strong people just as anyone else is. And, we have the capability to do great things. And I, I appreciate all the trucker lady groups out there, mm -hmm. such as she trucking and real women in trucking, just to the support in, in the community and to get yourself associated with other women truck drivers and get that support and get that learning because it is possible to become an owner operator. All right. All right. Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of female owner operators coming up. They, they they coming. Yes, yes. They coming. Many more ladies, they, and they I are, love it. They are they are coming. They coming in all shapes, sizes, and races. So they are coming. Well, uh, I like I said before, I like to thank you for coming on to the podcast, man. How do you have any social media or uh or or uh Instagram or uh YouTube that the people can find you at? I have my Instagram. And it's a bad mother underscore trucker. All right, hold on, right quick. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can bring it up. You know, because <laughs> it, you know, especially the ladies, they be coming up with these with these weird underscore underscore underscore. So you say, hey, uh, well, you uh, gotta you gotta take what you could get on uh, Instagram. There's so many usernames already taken up, and I love mine. All right, so hold on, a bad mother trucker. Uh, Nina, there you go. There yep. you go. I'm about to about to hit the follow back button. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Uh, oops, wait a minute. Hold on. Now. Hold on. There we go. I appreciate you uh, reaching out to me again, uh, giving me the time to uh, chop it up with you and all like that. Um, you know, we uh, we about to get on up out of here, and um, and yeah, you much success to you in life. Much success to you in trucking, and I hope everything, you know, especially between you and the brokers out here, gets a hell of a lot better. Hello? Uh, oh, can you still hear me? Yes, I'm oh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, Thanks I was. Thanks for having me. <laughs> brain freeze. Brain freeze. <laughs> I appreciate you having me on. All right. So if you guys want to come on and chop it up with uh with me, just like uh, Nina did, another bad mother trucker, yo, hit me up in the uh, uh in the uh Gmail, which is lockedoutbenpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can uh, text me 216-600-2090 or go over to instagram because you know that's where i find majority of these young ladies at they they see me i see them i reach out to them they reach out to me back and you know we connect and network and collab that's that's what i do you know what i'm saying hit me up in the dm over there all right so if you guys like content like this don't forget to like subscribe comment share and hit that bell 
for more content like this gotta hit that bell you gotta hit that subscribe button in order to know when i come out podcasts come out every uh come out every other day or every other i mean every week uh after five o'clock or after after five o'clock in the evening i'm not sure but it's definitely going to be after five o'clock when a new episode comes up uh if you guys want to know i mean if you guys want to hear about it more before it comes out on youtube you can go to your favorite podcast platforms type in lockout men and it will be right there all right so on that note I appreciate everybody being here. I appreciate everybody watching. I am your humble host, Lockout Men. This is another or a bad mother trucker, Nina. And we are gone. Yeah, that was pretty good. Right. See? Yeah, that was pretty that was pretty good. That was pretty good. You you you, you didn't think you was gonna you think you was gonna choke up and everything, huh? thought I was gonna you thought I was gonna oh, Jerry you thought I was gonna Jerry Spring of you or something like that. Surprise. <laughs>